Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at legendary gangster Jack Diamonds. The Irish immigrants Sarah and John Moran had moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1891, and their son Jack Diamond was born there on July 10, 1897. Eddie, his younger brother, was born in 1899. When they were younger, Jack and Eddie both had difficulties in school, and their mother, Sarah, struggled with severe arthritis and other health problems. Tragically, complications from a bacterial infection and a high fever led to Sarah's death on December 24, 1913. John Moran moved the family to Brooklyn, New York when she passed away. Subsequently, Diamond became a member of a Manhattan street gang known as the Hudson Dusters. His initial run-in with the law occurred on February 4, 1914, when he was arrested for breaking into a jewelry store. Diamond's military service took him to World War I, but he was later convicted and imprisoned for desertion. With the exact year of his conviction being either 1918 or 1919, he spent two years of a three to five year sentence at Leavenworth Military Prison. Upon his release in 1921, Diamond transitioned into a role as a hired enforcer and eventually became the personal bodyguard for crime boss Arnold Rothstein. Jack Diamond set off for Europe in the late 1920s with the goal of buying beer and drugs during Prohibition, which forbade the sale of alcoholic beverages, including beer in the United States. Unfortunately, he was unable to find any drugs to buy. He did, however, succeed in obtaining alcohol, which he skillfully conveyed. As ships entered New York Harbor, the whiskey was poured into barrels, which were then partially filled barrels that were dumped into the waters close to Long Island. Diamond hired neighborhood kids to help him collect the abandoned barrels, paying them a cent for each barrel they transported to his trucks. After Jacob Little Augie Organ passed away, Jack Diamond took over the illegal liquor business in downtown Manhattan, Diamond mostly used the Hotsi Totsi Club, a bar on Broadway where he had a stake. With this business, he was in direct opposition to Dutch Schultz, a rival gang leader in the city who wanted to spread his power outside Harlem. He also ran into trouble with other gangs in the city. On the summer of 1929, Diamond and fellow gang member Charles Entrada shot three drunken brawlers in the Hotsi Totsi Club. Two of the brawlers, William Cassidy and Simon Walker, were killed, while the survivor, Peter Cassidy, was severely wounded. The club's bartender, three waiters, and the hat check girl vanished. One of them was found shot dead in New Jersey. Diamond was not charged, but he was forced to close the club. In 1930, Jack Diamond, accompanied by two of his associates, carried out a kidnapping in Cairo, New York, targeting a truck driver named Grover Parks. Their objective was to force Parks to reveal the source of his load of hard cider. Despite Parks denying any involvement, Diamond and his men resorted to violence and torture in an attempt to extract information from him. Ultimately, they released Parks. A few months later, Diamond faced charges for the kidnapping of another individual, James Duncan. His first trial was held in Catskill, New York, where he was found not guilty. However, in a separate federal case involving related charges, Diamond was convicted and subsequently sentenced to four years in prison. In December 1931, Diamond faced yet another trial, this time in Troy, New York, on charges of kidnapping. Once again, he was acquitted of these charges. For living a lavish and ostentatious lifestyle, Jack Diamond was well known. His nickname Legs was given to him because of his exuberant energy and was either a result of his amazing dance abilities or his extraordinary capacity for swift evasion of foes and pursuers. While his wife Alice did not support his illicit activities, she also did not openly oppose him from engaging in them either. One of Diamond's most well-known mistresses was the showgirl and dancer Marion Kiki Roberts. Diamond was noted for his propensity for womanizing. As a flamboyant and fascinating personality during the Prohibition era, his personal life and romances only served to enhance that reputation. Jack Diamond set out on a journey on the ocean liner Belgenland bound for Europe on August 23, 1930, using the identity John Nolan. He might have departed the country aboard either the RMS Olympic or RMS Baltic, according to the New York City Police Department, NYPD. Diamond wasn't on board, though, when these ships arrived in Europe. In response, the NYPD communicated via wireless telegraph with the crew of the Belgian land, who confirmed the presence of a passenger matching Diamond's description. During the voyage, Diamond was frequently spotted in the ship's smoking room, where he engaged in poker games. While some reports suggested that he walked away with substantial winnings, the ship's officers disputed this claim, asserting that his earnings were relatively modest. The NYPD dispatched telegrams to law enforcement organizations in England, France, and Belgium after Jack Diamond's trip on the Belgian land, alerting them about Diamond's reputation as a troublemaker. Diamond was not allowed to enter England, Scotland Yard police told him when the Belgian land docked in Plymouth on August 31st. Speaking to reporters, Diamond stated his intention to seek medical attention in the French resort town of Vichy. 
He did, however, disembark in Antwerp on September 1st and was detained there by Belgian police at their headquarters. Diamond was finally put on a train headed for Germany after deciding to leave Belgium on his own will. German officials detained him when they got to Aachen. Diamond will be expelled, the German government decided on September 6th. He was taken to Hamburg and boarded the cargo ship Hanover for the journey back to Philadelphia, putting an end to his international adventure. When the cargo ship Hanover arrived in Philadelphia on September 23rd, the Philadelphia police detained Jack Diamond as soon as he stepped off the ship. The judge issued an ultimatum at a court appearance that day, saying Diamond would be freed if he agreed to leave Philadelphia within one hour. Diamond readily consented to these conditions, obtaining his release on the stipulation that he leave the city as soon as possible. On October 24, 1924, Jack Diamond was shot during a delivery job. The incident reportedly occurred as he attempted to hijack liquor trucks that belonged to a rival crime syndicate. This event was just one of many violent episodes in Diamond's criminal career during the Prohibition era. Marked by clashes with rival gangs and law enforcement, Jack Diamond tried to stop Little Augie Organ from being killed on October 16, 1927. Diamond was stepping in for his brother Eddie, who usually served as Organ's security on that fatal day. Organ and Diamond were strolling down a street in the Lower East Side of Manhattan when three young males came up to them and started shooting. Diamond was tragically shot twice below the heart, and Organ was fatally injured. He was taken by ambulance to Bellevue Hospital, where his wounds were eventually treated. Despite being questioned by the police while in the hospital, Diamond refused to cooperate in identifying the assailants or assisting with the investigation in any way. Initially, the police suspected Diamond of involvement and charged him with homicide, but those charges were later dropped. It was believed that the attackers had been hired by Louis Lepka and Gura Shapiro, who aimed to expand their influence in Organ's garment disc labor rackets. This incident further cemented Diamond's reputation as a central figure in the violent underworld at the time. Jack Diamond went through a terrifying experience in October 1930 when he was shot again, this time at the Hotel Monticello on Manhattan's west side. Five shots were fired at him by two intruders who forced their way into his room. Diamond managed to crawl into the hallway in his jammies before passing out. Diamond jokingly responded that he had taken two shots of whiskey before leaving his room when the police commissioner questioned him about how he was still able to move after being shot. He was quickly sent to the Polyclinic Hospital, where he eventually made a full recovery and was subsequently released on December 30, 1930. In April 1931, Diamond faced another challenge when he was arrested in Catskill on assault charges related to an incident involving Grover Parks in 1930. Two days later, he was released from county jail after posting a $25,000 bond. However, trouble struck again just five days later when Diamond was shot and injured for the third time at the Aratoga Inn, a roadhouse near Cairo. After enjoying a meal in the dining room with three companions, he was shot three times and collapsed near the establishment's entrance. Fortunately, a local resident rushed Diamond to a hospital in Albany, where he ultimately recovered. During his hospital stay on May 1st, the New York State Police seized over $5,000 worth of illegal beer and alcohol from hiding spots associated with Diamond in Cairo and at the Aratoga Inn. As events unfolded, August 1931 saw Diamond and Paul Quattrocchi standing trial on bootlegging charges. In the same month, Diamond received a conviction and was sentenced to serve four years in a state prison. In September 1931, Diamond launched an appeal against his conviction. On December 18, 1931, Jack Diamond's adversaries managed to track him down. Diamond had been residing at a rooming house on Dove Street in Albany during his trial for kidnapping in Troy. The evening before his acquittal on December 17, Diamond celebrated with his family and friends at a restaurant in Albany. Around 1 a.m., Diamond and his mistress, Marion Kiki Roberts, decided to enjoy themselves at the Rainbow Room of the Kenmore Hotel, located on North Pearl Street. At 4.30 a.m. that morning, a heavily intoxicated Jack Diamond returned to his rooming house and collapsed onto his bed, passed out. About an hour later, two assailants entered his room. One of them restrained Diamond, while the other fired three shots into the back of his head. The identity of the individuals responsible for this murder has long been a subject of speculation. Suspected culprits include Dutch Schultz, the Ole brothers, the Albany Police Department, and relatives of Red Cassidy, another Irish-American gangster of that era. According to William Kennedy, the author of O oh Albany, it's believed that Dan O'Connell, the figure who controlled the local democratic political machine, ordered Diamond's assassination, which was subsequently carried out by members of the Albany police force. The following are Dan O'Connell's own words, recorded during a 1974 interview with Kennedy and are documented on pages 203 and 204 of the book. Knowing that such protection would not be provided in our town, they requested protection in order to make it easier for the mafia to invade our region. This issue had already been definitively resolved by us, 
Legs Diamond came to us with a plan to start an insurance company in our community, which is only a cover for intimidating local business owners into buying protection. He received a resounding message from us that such behaviors were not permitted in Albany, and we anticipated him to leave by the next morning. Legs Diamond did not start any operations as a result. It's worth noting that a man named Pryor introduced Diamond to our area, but his frequent visits eventually became a source of trouble. William Fitzpatrick, who was a police sergeant at the time and later became chief, confronted Legs Diamond while they were in the same room. Fitzpatrick warned him that he would resort to lethal force if Diamond did not leave town immediately. Some people believe this version of events, given the large amount of power the O'Connell machine in Albany possessed, and their unrelenting dedication to maintaining their own control over vice-related operations in the city. This argument holds that William Fitzpatrick's appointment as police commander was considered as recompense for his assistance in taking out Legs Diamond. A detective from the Albany Police Department named John McElvany tragically shot and killed Chief Fitzpatrick in his own office in 1945, putting an end to his life. McElvany was given a sentence of 20 years to life in jail, but he was freed in 1957 after Governor W. Avril Harriman reduced it. On December 23, 1931, Legs Diamond was laid to rest at Mount Olivet Cemetery in Maspeth, Queens. The burial lacked any formal church service or graveside ceremony, with around 200 family members and spectators in attendance and no known criminal figures present. Tragically, on July 1, 1933, Alice Kenny Diamond, who was 33 years old and the widow of Legs Diamond, was discovered shot to death in her Brooklyn apartment. Speculation arose that she may have been targeted by Diamond's adversaries to silence her. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one.